Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm one of those people that uh, uh, Rob talked about, who probably will faint on stage. <laughs> I'm just hoping that I will not faint, but uh, I'm not a motivational speaker. Mine is purely back in there, getting the job done. Uh, that said and done, I'm Eddie Senkumba, Director of Works, uh, Nice House of Plastics. Uh, we are found in the beautiful land of Uganda, the part of Africa. Our company was started in 1970 by <coughs> the late Dr. James Mwana, who was a very visionary businessman. He established what then was called uh, Ship Toothbrush Factory Limited, which, let, which uh, later became uh, Nice House of Plastics. Um, he was uh, a revered business acumen, both in Uganda, East Africa, and the world at large, because he, repre he represented a, a couple of, uh, of uh, companies on uh, their boards. Our company was started in 1970, and our first product was uh, none other than the toothbrush. That's the reason why we were called Ship Toothbrush Factory. In uh, 1995, we adopted the name of uh, Nice House of Plastics because our product range grew by all those uh, items you can see there. We've now currently also expanded our range into the furniture business. But uh, how does our story begin? I mean, how, do, how does Nice House of Plastics get involved in the MDW program? And that's a very fascinating story. One of our directors, it's a company-owned family, sorry, it's a family-owned business. One of our directors, while on a tour in South Africa, did bump into uh, Robert. How, when, no idea. And then he did convince Robert to take a flight to Uganda. And Robert obliged. He came into our office one beautiful morning, sunny, sunny morning. He sat in there and he talked about mission-directed work teams. And it was all beautiful presentation. We listened and listened and we didn't understand. So the poor guy was there for the day. He left and went back to South Africa. So amongst the directors, uh, we shared, you know, like, um, what was that all about? And we had absolutely no idea. Um, then... This is when it happened, uh, when our late MD, because being a family-owned business, a lot of things are done. I think that's what uh, Johan was saying. It's that director, that MD, who knows where you're going. And everybody follows. Then one morning in, the, in 2013, he was no more. And then the young tax that us had to take the company over. We looked left, we looked right. The, the beacon was gone. So that's when we remembered wait a minute, is that guy who came from South Africa and talked about a mission, directed work team? Maybe you give him a call and find out exactly what's going on. <laughs> so we gave him a call, and then me and my and, uh, junior officer took a flight, came down to, uh, to Cape Town, and then we got together again with Robert. And we said, uh, Robert, Chris, we're back again. Now we want to listen. And this time around, it wasn't him coming to Uganda, it was us coming to South Africa. And that's where the journey began. He took us through the whole thing once again. And by the time we left uh, Cape Town, that was about three, four days, I was more than convinced that there was no other way. So that's how our journey started. Uh, we've got four production facilities, an employee of about uh, over 260 people. We are spread over four acres of land with 24 mini business units. Now that was, is, and will be a challenge because uh, the fact that we are add-on operation, we have got team centers spread over so many areas. And one of the challenges that we always have is to try to coordinate operations for all these uh, mini business units that have to adhere to the laid down procedures. Uh, we've got a current, currently a new plant in the new industrial area. That's where we're hoping that we're going to be able to consolidate all our operations, probably three, four years going, I'm, I'm, I'm coming um, in the future, so that we're able to put all our operations under one roof. 
Um, why did we embark on the MBUs? We did that in, like I said, in July 2014. This was our old vision and mission. Um, our vision was to produce, it's a mouthful, produce plastic products that offer good value for money through continuous improvement. At re our mission was to be efficient, our values, integrity, teamwork. Now, this was what it was before we embarked on the journey, as we call it. We had no structured performance measurement. All we're interested in is the product. That's the machine here. The product, the target. Shift one produces so many. Shift two, shift three. How you do it, that's your business. I think that's what you're talking about. Guys, get it done. How you get it done, that's your business. All I want, I want to see my product. And that's what we were operating at that time. Low employee morale. Guys were like, well, you know, our left MD is gone. We've got these new young men and women. We don't know how long it's going to take them to wake up and say, guys, get out of here. This is the new way we're doing. We're going to run this business. Everything was on an individual recognition. So the best driver, the best packer, the best um, um, loader, there was never anything called team. We never drop anything via teams. It was about your individual commitment, I mean your individual contribution. We did a lot of housekeeping, as you can see. Um, this is a representation of our spare parts store. That's where we kept our raw materials. We would, you know, from time to time, you know, sweep the place. So basically that, what we did was housekeeping. That was housekeeping. Um, we imagine that when you tell the person that this is your duty, you've got it done. So we had, we had very detailed um, production. This is a, a worksheet for a production technician. Go and do this, go and do that, ensure this is that, update this, update that. Good enough. I mean, the guy knows what he's supposed to do. Go and get it done. That's what we, we believed in. Standardized procedures. PPE was... Um, a myth. So, yeah, this was optional. This guy is busy welding. He's got, his eyes are not protected. This guy is in a very noisy environment, but he decides to put his earmuffs on his head, not over his, over his uh, ears. And that was good. That was fine. Um, then came the trying moment. How do you get this imported program into a culture of people that have been used to following one direction, one person. We sat down with Rob and Chris and tried to figure out exactly how do we market, how do we implant this program into our people. We decided that uh, because our MD had just passed on, his name was uh, Mulwana, instead of calling the program MDW because that would be an, a foreign import, people would not you know, people don't like change. So we decided that let's use the word, the name, Muluana Way, as the program name. So that one will achieve a buy-in from everybody because uh, everybody at that time, that was 2014, uh, MD had just passed on, had a very strong sentiment towards that loss. So we thought and believed that by calling the program his name, would, uh, people would adhere to it and they'll make it their own. And by God, it did pay off. So the buy-in, I believe, was one of the smoothest things that we ever had because people were able to understand and, and realize that it was part of his legacy that was being uh, um, nurtured on. Our vision was then changed to something very simple, adding something nice to everybody's life. Um, this was, uh, you know, after deliberate thinking and how do we create something that will speak to everybody, will, will um, be understandable to everybody. And that's how we came up with a simple vision that's adding something nice to everybody's life. Our mission then changed to achieving excellence in every aspect of our business. This is something that we also discovered was very easy for our people to relate to. to, relate to. The guy who's cleaning, the guy who's mopping, the guy who's on the machine, how does he add something nice to somebody's life. If he only achieves excellence in his operational area, 
is already playing that role. We changed our values immensely. We came up with people you can trust, respect for people, teamwork, innovation, hard work, very basic and simple values that can be uh, very easily related into, I mean, integrated into our day-to-day -day life. We embarked on 5S. It was amazing that the same store that initially was house, we did housekeeping in, was able to have materials stacked, clearly labeled, and it was very easy for everybody to see now. Going forward, that's how all our stores are, raw material and finished products. This is how it was before the program. We were comfortable with that. But it was such a transforma transformation when we went to that and realized, oops, so this very same thing could actually look like that and be maintained. Still part of our 5S operation, keeping everything as neat and as presentable as it had to be. Our machines did also experience a change. I mean, this was a motor at one time working. Now, the same motor, I believe, in this state is uh, probably more comfortable. That was all part of the 5S, you know, the initial two S's. That's the uh, sort, discard, and the shine aspect. Just by doing that, we're able to transform from this to that. Team spirit. Everything is about a team now. At Nice House of Plastics, everything is about a team. We've, like I said, we've got 24 mini business units, and those are 24 teams. So everything is about how do we get better? How do we do better? How do we achieve better? So um, when you go around the company, you'll see a lot of team centers who have got their photos up for different aspects of, uh, of achievements. We have also... Um, driven the team into a new concept of the widely important goals. Um, this was to try and align um, results. Because like I said, change is one of the things that are, are very, very difficult. And I believe in Africa, I think it's even harder than anywhere else. People enjoy the comfort zones. Now, we, we thought that if we give these guys 20, 30 things that we need them to change, they're going to give up. They're going to get tired. They're going to think we're overfeeding them. So every six months, we come up with two issues that we want to drive strongly and want everybody to focus on. And currently, what, we'd, what we have are these, is these two weeks, which is increasing OEE, overall OEE for the plant to 85%, and increasing our sales to 100%. And every day at all team centers, we review and we communicate our OEE and our sales so that everybody is in sync with what's going on in the, in, the, uh, in, in, the, in the company. Because initially what we discovered were driving after a year into the program was that everybody looked at their own uh, mini business unit and as long as they were successful, they did not think about the overall company picture. So we wanted to implant the overall company picture into each and every mini business unit so that people are aware of exactly what is going on around them. We have uh, successfully, I believe, uh, implemented SOPs and MRs in all areas of our, our operational um, systems, documenting of the processes, changing of the um, SOPs, and supervisors are now following the MRs. MRs are a fantastic invention. Like I said, before MRs came, Guys used to come to work, they would be very tired at the end of the day, but you'd ask them, what is it that you've done for the day? And half the time, they would not be able to account for what they've done. With our in-house designed MRs, sorry, it's very easy to tell exactly what it is that this guy has done, what he has not done, what it is that uh, has failed him, and we're able to follow on um, um, proceedings on a daily, on a weekly, to see exactly what's happening. Likewise, for our junior operators, we have SOPs all over the place telling them exactly what it is that we want them to do, what it is that we want them to do it, and that's been one of uh, the issues that we've been uh, pretty successful over. We've also ab been able to drive um, uh, SOP adherence. Um, the gentleman on the side here was not adhering to his uh, PPE. He had no ear earmuffs. He had no gloves. The whole area where he was working was always a mess. But now we have guys who know that 
you know, before you start a job, you have to be properly dressed in your PPE, and it's becoming a norm. It's becoming a way of uh, how we get things done. We've also been very, very successful in achieving a coaching review, um, uh, sticking the coaching review timetables, because we've seen and understood that without coaching reviews, it's not possible to assess where your MBUs stand. So we religiously carry out these uh, coaching reviews every month without fail. It's, not, it's one of the things that we have to, to do without fail. Obstacles experienced, um, like all th good things, um, MDW was also a challenge to us. One of the things that we had was attendance and timekeeping. Um, guys thought that it was okay to come when you felt like coming, and it was okay not to turn up. And uh, one of the things that I had to drive quite passionately, and it did cost me a couple of uh, friends, was uh, you either do it or you do it. There was no in-between. So, how do we drive that? Um, we drive it military style. Uh, the teams will not accept more than three raids on their attendance charts. So a raid in uh, Uganda or at Nice House of Plastics is a let or an absent. So the first guy who is let, scot free, he's okay. The second guy who is absent, no problem. Now the third guy has lost the plot. And that's what we've done. So the maximum number of raids that are allowed on any attendance chart in any business unit is three. And the third guy is the guy who takes the fall. So every third, uh, every third team member who gets a raid will buy the whole team a yogurt, a break, or if he doesn't have the money to buy yogurt, he will do community service. And our community service is um, staying behind after work to clean up, um, washing the walls, um, slashing the grass outside in the company. So we've come up with this, and ever since that, our attendance is hitting a record 98%. So you are only allowed to be away from work, away from a, a mini business unit, if you're in a hospital bed. But even then, <laughs> if they can wheel you in for the meeting, <laughs> come for the meeting, and then you, you can go back. That's how we're doing it. So that's what our attendance looked like before. That was uh, done, and this is what it is now. I mean. This is a true story. That's how attendance is at our MBUs. Um, the other issue we had was uh, language. We've got 41 languages, different languages in Uganda. And um, in a company like Nice House of Plastics, you probably end up employing one of each of those 41 different languages. Now, communication became a problem. People did not understand when we talked about uh, multi-level meetings, climate survey, um, team on one peer, all that was a challenge. So what did we do? We decided to take the key documents like uh, climate survey and we translate them into our local languages so that it was so fascinating that, uh, let's take an example of, uh, I know what is expected of me at work. It's a climate survey, you're supposed to tick yes or no. Now, because this guy does not understand the English, the way it's supposed to be understood, he'll probably take yes. So he does not know what's expected of him at work. Then the moment you translate it in, into our local language and ask him, um, what is it that I was asking in English? He would say, oh, of course I know what's expected of me at work. But that came from a lot of climate surveys and a lot of, a lot of documentation that we were giving out. And we're, give, we're getting different answers depending on the language you're using. So we came up with the only way to break through the language barriers is to translate each and every document into a language that people are comfortable with, and that has also paid off. The other challenge we had was understanding the program. Uh, the MDW program is not one of the simplest of programs. I mean, when you look at the beautiful charts, the blue, the red marker, the black marker, it's all nursery school stuff. But the detail, the gist of the matter is so complex that even two and a half years into the program, we still have people who are having challenges. So how do we go about that? We've uh, created um, enhancement. We used to call them remedial, remedial lessons, but then uh, people did not like it when 
a 41 year old is asked to come back for after classes so we changed it from remedial to enhancement we're actually enhancing you so we call them enhancement lessons for an hour three times a week for all those people who have challenges in understanding kpis in understanding how the mdw program runs so when we do have um, our coaching reviews uh, the team picks out issues that we feel were not done well by um, most teams. We come up with a, an agenda and then every day, uh, I mean three times a week for an hour, people come back and actually go through these issues and through that we've been able to implant or implant the program even deeper into um, the members. We used to have an issue of adhering to set guidelines. Uh, that's yet again uh, people being unruly. We've come up with a meeting checklist for the team leaders. So a team leader will have a checklist before the meeting to see exactly what is required. Are people in uniform? Are they present? Are they um, are mobile phones off? Are they attentive to detail? So we have come up with a checklist. One of them is uh, for the team leaders. The other one is a mandatory mentor coach visits. Uh, coaches do not visit teams as and when they want. It's mandatory. So we have a check list for coaches to ensure that they do the uh, required uh, visits to the team centers. Uh, team, meeting, uh, team meetings start, I mean, team members uh, convene 10 minutes before the team meeting. And uh, team leaders visit each other's team. So today, if I'm in team A, um, three, four weeks down later, I'm expected to go to team B and look at how does team B conduct, conduct this meeting. So we're able to share and, um, and exchange ideas. So this was our meeting before where people were very disorganized. Now we have our meetings very organized. One of the things that we've done that I've seen contrary to South Africa is our meetings are conducted when we're standing up. We initially had chairs like you people do out here, but people used to go to sleep. So um, we decided that it's only eight minutes for an MBU meeting, and surely for eight minutes you can stand. Because uh, you can imagine if you had had a night shift and you're checking out, um, we believe that if you stand for these eight minutes, not only does it get you awake and alert, but it actually connects and engages the team even better. So we do not, we removed all chairs from our, our meeting centers. And then this was uh, Borrow with Pride. The last time we came to Cape Town and uh, had a chat with Robert and Chris, we wanted to put some flair in our MLM. MLM used to be such a drug. You'd stand there and some guy would come with all the numbers for the month. Da, 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 and after about half an hour, everybody in the room was half asleep. So what we came up with, that's a Borrow with Pride, was we'd have different teams hosting uh, the MLM. Now, we could start off with a dance, we could start off with a quiz, we could start off with uh, so many th fancy things. Teams are coming up with amazing ideas. Um, so, teams that are hosting do come up with a theme, and that's what is actually done for that MLM. So, MLMs are no longer boring, there's no more blame game, and uh, teams air their challenges, and there's a lot of um, support coming from the coaches. We've been able to have uh, some results as well. Our plant OEE, overall plant OEE is rising. Our target, remember, is 85%. We were slowly getting out there. Our average is laying at about 74, but we certainly are reaping results. Uh, we've also um, reaped some teamwork, problem solving. Teams visit each other and copy the pride. We are a results-driven organization. Every, everybody now largely understands why they're here, or why they're at Nice House of Plastics and what exactly they have to do. Teams are, are fighting to raise availability, performance, and quality of products. And the Mulwana Way management system is now part of our life. Like I say, because we call it Mulwana Way, it's part of us. It's no longer the MDW. It has the MDW genes, but the name, the title is uh, Mulwana Way, so it's ours. We actually own it. And people believe and talk Mulwana way. So when you're walking through Nice House of Plastics, you'll hear people talking about innovation, safety, SOPs. I mean, we talk about SOPs in eating, 
that you're not following the SOPs because probably you're not using a fork and knife. Um, we're talking about uh, SLAs, so a guy will pack in your slot, and uh, if you ask him to move, you say, what does the SLA say? Does it say that, you know, I mean, we, 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 plant, we planted a lot of jargon out of the MDW program into our daily life, just to keep, keep, um, keep it alive and going. Um, we've uh, a clearly defined vision and mission, adding something nice to everybody's life, achieving excellence. And uh, one of the things that uh, we're proud to say is adherence to set rules. Um, normally, people in Uganda are very law-abiding. People like, if you tell them exactly what to do and you present it in a, um, a friendly way, people will pick it up. So one of the things that we did come up with was uh, compulsory earplugs. That was an issue because people do not like to use earplugs. So we came up with a slogan, it's called Chunga Masikio in Swahili. It says, it says, protect your ears. So it's no longer a, a requirement by the company to wear earplugs, but what you're actually saying is protect your ears. So whenever you're entering the factory, protect your ears. It's not a, a command from the company, but it's something you're doing on your own. So we, a lot of that has been achieved through driving people, you know, making them own, own uh, the... Um, the um, the innovation. The next steps, where are we going? Um, one of the things that we did find out was um, Rob and Chris, when they came over, you know, we had this slogan, uh, when you do not do what is expected of you, you're gonna get under the bus. Now, many people, of course, have fallen off the bus and they've had to go under the bus. So a lot of, we, we, we're getting in a lot of new stuff, and one of the biggest uh, issues that we've discovered is that when you join a company that is running an MDW program, one of the biggest things that happens to you is a culture shock. You look at all these walls covered in blue and white charts, you look at these people talking about jargon KPIs and stuff, and it's actually very scary. We've had a situation where two of our staff left not because they didn't want to work with us, but because when they saw what they saw on the walls, they just thought this was not for us. These guys are, are doing something. We, I, I was hired as an accountant. What I saw out there has nothing to do with finance. So what we, do what we do now? Uh, before a team, before a, a, a member joins a team, we go through an induction program. And this induction program normally lasts two weeks. And all that we do in this induction program is to feed you in into the MDW program. I mean, we talk about charts, we talk about KPIs, to sort of like reduce the culture shock before we release you out into the wild to make sure that you've bought into the program. So one of the things that we're actually doing quite extensively now is induction of stuff. The catch-up trainings are also a great help and we, we continue with them quite a bit because it does not make sense to have coaching reviews where a team scores 15 and another is scoring 41 in the same organization. Something is not right. So we are driving, having coaching reviews reflecting more or less even results across the M MBUs because that shows you that everybody is on the same platform. Because at one time we had so many teams that were performing so well and others not doing so well, and we had to sort of narrow this gap. That's exactly what we're doing with the refresher trainings. And then, of course, the Kaizen, we are in, we are in the process of um, implementing Kaizen, and it's one of the things that we will probably uh, present at our next uh, summit as a success story. Uh, 5S is also f in progress. Um, after, especially after you know, installing our new ERP, which is in progress right now, we want to really embark on the full 5S so that uh, instead of just sorting, sorting and shining, we actually go all the way. All that said and done, thank you very much for listening. And, and, and the question is, we always ask ourselves, if we did not have the MDW program, what would it be? And the answer is, we, I, don't, I, think, I don't think it would exist without this program. It's done wonders for us. Thank you.